And it came to pass that I, Eno, walked with God. In those days I lived among men, but my heart yearned for the mysteries of heaven. I was a man of faith, always seeking to understand the ways of the Lord. One day as I walked in the fields, praying and thinking on the wonders of creation, a great marvel occurred. The air around me began to shimmer, like the heat rising from sun-baked stones. I rubbed my eyes thinking perhaps the midday sun had tricked my vision. But lo, when I looked again, the very fabric of the world seemed to part before me. Fear and wonder filled me in equal measure. Then I heard a voice gentle as a breeze yet powerful as a storm saying, Fear not, Enoch, for I am the Lord your God. I have found favor in you, and I shall show you the wonders of my kingdom. At these words I fell to my knees, my face pressed to the earth. Lord, I cried, I am but a man. How can I bear to see such things? The voice spoke again, Rise, Enoch, for I have chosen you to witness these things and to share them with the children of men. Trembling, I rose to my feet. As I did, I felt myself being lifted up, as if carried by unseen hands. The earth fell away beneath me, growing smaller and smaller until it looked like a jewel set in the vastness of space. And behold, before me stretched a path of light, brighter than the sun and more beautiful than any rainbow. It pulsed with life and energy, as if it were a living thing. The voice of the Lord came to me again, saying, Behold, Enoch, the nine stations of light. Walk this path, and you shall see the wonders of my kingdom. With fear and joy in my heart, I set my foot upon the shining path. As I did, I felt strength flow into me, and my spirit was lifted up. The First Station as I stepped onto the first station, I was bathed in a warm, golden light. It surrounded me, filled me, and I felt as if I were floating in a sea of pure sunlight. All the cares and worries of earthly life melted away, like snow under the spring sun. In this golden light, I saw visions of joy and peace. I saw children laughing, families embracing, and people helping one another. I understood then that this was the light of God's love in its purest form, touching the hearts of all his children. I wept with joy, for I had never known such peace. Is this what awaits us, Lord? I asked. And the voice answered, This and more, my son. For those who walk in my ways, this joy shall be theirs for all eternity. The Second Station As I moved to the second station, the light changed to a deep, rich blue. It was like standing beneath an endless ocean of stars. In this blue light, I saw countless spirits moving in perfect harmony. They danced and swirled around each other, leaving trails of stardust in their wake. Then I heard music. Oh, what music it was! It was unlike anything I had ever heard on earth. It was as if every beautiful sound in creation, the song of birds, the rush of wind, the laughter of children, had been woven together into a perfect melody. The spirits sang as they danced their voices blending in perfect harmony. I found myself weeping again, but this time from the sheer beauty of it all. What is this place, Lord? I asked in wonder. This, came the answer, is where the spirits of the righteous dwell. They sing praises to me day and night, and their joy knows no end. The third station. The third station blazed with a pure white light. As I stepped into it, I felt as if I were being unmade and remade. It was painful, yet joyous. Every impurity, every sin, every earthly attachment was stripped away. I cried out, for the process was intense. Yet even as I did, I felt myself becoming lighter, purer. It was as if years of grime were being washed away, revealing the true self beneath. When it was done, I felt new, clean, whole in a way I had never been before. This one, said the Lord, is the purifying fire of my love. All who come to me must pass through it, that they may be made fit for my kingdom. The fourth station. At the fourth station, I was surrounded by a soothing green light. In this light, I saw the interconnectedness of all creation. I saw how the beating of a butterfly's wings could stir the air on the other side of the world. I saw how the kindness of one person could change the hearts of many. I saw the birth of stars and the death of planets. I witnessed the dance of galaxies and the delicate balance of life on Earth. 
All of it was connected, all of it part of God's grand design. Lord, I, I said in awe, your creation is vast beyond imagining. Yes, came the reply, and yet I know every hair on every head, every grain of sand on every shore. All is known to me, all is loved by me. The fifth station. The fifth station pulsed with a deep, royal purple light. Here I encountered beings of such wisdom and power that I could scarcely comprehend them. They were like living libraries containing all the knowledge of heaven and earth. These beings spoke to me, though not in words. They shared with me glimpses of heavenly wisdom, insights into the nature of reality that made my head spin. I saw the patterns of history, the ebb and flow of time, the hidden connections between all things. Who are these beings, Lord? I asked in wonder. These are the guardians of wisdom, came the answer. They keep the knowledge of all ages, past, present, and future. The Sixth Station As I entered the Sixth Station, I was enveloped in a warm pink light. This light seemed to pulse with pure love. It was so intense, so all-encompassing, that I felt as if I might burst from the sheer force of it. In this light, I saw how God's love flowed through all of creation. I saw how it bound everything together, from the smallest atom to the largest galaxy. I saw how this love was the very fabric of reality, the force that held the universe together. I saw acts of kindness and sacrifice, great and small. I saw how every loving deed, no matter how tiny, sent ripples of goodness throughout creation. This, said the Lord, is the essence of my being. For God is love, and all who abide in love abide in me. The Seventh Station The Seventh Station shimmered with a silvery, ever-changing light. Here I witnessed the workings of divine justice and mercy. I saw how every action, every choice made by every person, sent ripples through the fabric of creation. I saw how God's justice ensured that every deed, good or ill, had its consequences. Yet I also saw how His mercy tempered this justice, offering hope and redemption even to the most lost of souls. It was a delicate balance, a cosmic dance of cause and effect, choice and consequence. I marveled at the perfection of it all. Lord, I said, your ways are perfect beyond understanding. Yes, came the reply, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Eighth Station As I approached the Eighth Station, I was wrapped in a light of deepest indigo. Here the mysteries of time were revealed to me. I saw how past, present, and future existed all at once in God's sight. I saw the entire history of creation unfold before me, from the first moment of creation to the final consummation of all things. I saw how every moment was connected to every other moment, how the past influenced the future, and how the future reached back to shape the past. It was overwhelming, almost more than my human mind could bear. Yet through it all, I sensed God's guiding hand, ensuring that all things work together for good. This, said the Lord, is how I see all of time. For to me a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Ninth Station Finally I stood before the Ninth Station. The light here was beyond description, a radiance that seemed to contain every color imaginable, and yet was more than just color. As I stepped into this light, I felt myself being transformed, lifted up to a state of being beyond my human form. And there, at the very heart of creation, I beheld the throne of God. Words fail me as I try to describe the majesty, the overwhelming presence of the Almighty that I encountered. The throne was not merely a seat of power, but the very center of all existence, the point from which all creation flowed. It pulsed with an energy so pure, so powerful, that I felt I might be unmade by its mere presence. Around the throne were beings of such celestial beauty and power that my mind could scarcely comprehend them. The highest of all angels, their forms a perfect embodiment of divine will and purpose. Their voices raised in a song of praise that seemed to shake the very foundations of heaven. Each one was unique, their appearances shifting as I watched. At times they appeared as beings of pure light, 
At others, they took forms reminiscent of the most majestic creatures of Earth. Lions with eyes of flame, eagles with wings that span the cosmos, beings that seemed to be composed of the very elements of creation. As I stood there, bathed in the radiance of God's presence, this I realized was the ultimate destination of every soul, the source from which we all came and to which we all long to return. I fell to my knees, overwhelmed by the glory of it all. And then I heard the voice of God, not just around me now, but within me, resonating through every fiber of my being. Enoch, said the Lord, you have walked with me and found favor in my sight. I have shown you these things that you might bear witness to my glory and my love for all my children. Go now and share what you have seen, that others might know the wonders that await those who love me. As the vision began to fade, as I felt myself being drawn back to the world of men, I was filled with a mixture of joy and sorrow. Joy at the wonders I had witnessed, the glory I had beheld. Sorrow at leaving this place of perfect peace and love. Yet even as I returned to my earthly life, I knew that I had been changed forever. The memory of what I had seen burned bright within me, a flame of divine truth that would guide me for the rest of my days. And so, my children, I share this vision with you. I do this not to boast of my own importance, for I am but a man chosen by God's grace to witness these things. No, I share this vision that you might know the wonder and glory that awaits all who walk in God's ways. For we are not mere creatures of dust, destined to live and die in darkness. We are children of light, meant for glory beyond imagining. Let us live our lives in the light of this truth, always striving to align ourselves with the divine purpose that governs all creation. Remember, my children, that the path to this heavenly realm begins not in some distant future, but here and now, in the choices we make, in the love we share. For in every act of kindness, in every moment of forgiveness, in every deed done in love, we bring a little bit of heaven down to earth. 